Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Science, the Art and Science of Watts Collection. Uh, today we're going to talk about what's pretty much of a good example, I think, of standard horology and that's uh, the watches made by Longines. Now, the important thing to understand about Longines is that they are wholly a part of the Swatch group. Their movements are made by ETA, uh, and both the mechanical and quartz movements. So we, just to get by that uh, very quickly. Now, before they were, uh, they became part of um, the Swatch group, I think it was back in 1983, uh, they had a big history that they had been making mechanical watches and so forth, like you know, a lot of other companies. So they're 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 not a new company. So and so they have some kind of sort of what I'll call historical pride in terms of their sense of what they should be doing and what they are doing. Uh, so let's take a look at it. And the first thing I wanted to do was to sort of give an overview of the of their watches that they make and their classifications. They have five classifications and believe me, once you get into them, some of them don't make a bit of sense. I'll tell you that right now because there's some watches that were put together that don't seem to be together. Uh, well, anyway, so the, the five groups are what they call the elegance, uh, the tradition, uh, the watchmaking tradition, equestrian, sport, and heritage. Some of them have a lot of subcategories like the elegance and the watchmaking tradition. Uh, the, they have several categories, whereas the equestrian and the heritage don't. They just, they're just all equestrian or all heritage. And the sport has two. One's called conquest, and the other one's called hydro conquest. There's, you can imagine <laughs> they're basically sports watches uh, with some divers added into it. All right, uh, so let's uh, let's take a look at these and see where they take us. Now, the, the first one that I wanted to start with was was something from what they call the elegance line to give you an idea of what some of the resources that they use on their watches and the prices. Now, a lot of these prices are going to say, well, these prices are pretty good. In, in, in one sense, yes. If, if you compare the prices of these watches with any of the high horology watches or even a good deal of the strong horology watches, they look pretty good. But you got to remember, $1,000 is a lot of money. All right, and these so these don't have a lot that we're going to look at anyway that are under a thousand. So we're not dealing with you know really cheap watches. We're dealing with watches that are are expensive, even though we become used to much more expensive watches. Okay, so I, I wanted to start with this one because it's I I just sort of like the looks of it. The the watches in what they call their um, elegance uh, category, I, they're all just about all women's watches. In fact, I think all of them are. There's some of them that might be unisex, but the, uh, for the most part, they're women's watches. And, and this one is a $3,500 quartz watch, and it's got uh, 56 diamonds, of about a half a carat, a little under a half a carat of them. And a mother of pearl a dial, you know, this is a pretty fancy watch. And and again, when you come down to thirty five hundred dollars, say, oh well, that's not bad. And in in a way, so many other companies, Patek Philippe, Vacheron and Constantin. When you look at the women's watches, they are quartz watches, so they're a bargain compared to those, but. Not that much, okay? So some of these things are pretty high, uh, pretty pricey <laughs> watches. Okay, so this is the, the, the first group, the elegance. And so these are primarily women's watches. 
All right, let's take a look at some of the subcategories. They have the one called the presence. Now, this is the one that, to me, it's an automatic, and it, and it, yeah, that could that could go for a, a unisex watch. Uh, the uh, Prima Luna is a little uh, moon phase. They have little, all of the Prima Luma have a little moon phase. Awfully small watch for. I don't know what you're going to see is a moon phase on that. It's a quartz watch, $1,200. Um, and, and by the way, too, these are just a, just a sampling because each one of these subcategories has a whole bunch of different watches. Some have more or less. But anyway, this is just sort of give you an overview. Uh, the the liar, uh, this is automatic. And again, this is sort of a larger uh, woman's watches. It's the kind of thing that I would say is what I call an office watch, something you can put on where to work. It's got some style to it or some fashion, but it's not it's not sort of dressy up one like uh, the Dulce Vita uh, quartz watch. That's a that's just the kind of watch I happen to like. It looks something like a, a Reverso. Uh, my wife has a Zaza Lacoutre Reverso, a small women's size one, and it that same shape. It's a very pretty watch. I like the red strap on it too. Okay, so that's the elegance. And like I said, they're mostly women's watches. Now, this next one is the next group is called Watchmaking Tradition. And one of the new things that they have in it uh, is called the record. It's the name of their, uh, it's the name of the line. It's called the record. And they make a big deal about it because it's COSC. And COSC is sort of a certification that the watch meets uh, chronometer standards. So, you know, for uh, 2025 bucks, they have some of them that are, are lower than that, but they're all... Uh, all of the ones that are part of the watchmaking tradition that are in that are called record all have the COSC. Now, one of the things uh, that I found, I was looking at some, and uh, as I am wont, I'm looking for some deals, and I, I was going through and looking at the um, Longines record, and I saw a whole bunch of them. And the interesting thing was, this was on Chrono Twenty Four. They were brand new about $500 left, roughly, right in that neighborhood. Ah, oh, man, there are a lot of these things. But then, if you're going to go look in there, be careful, because there are a lot of smaller sizes. They don't uh, they don't show relative sizes in the pictures they have. And so, if, if you're interested in this kind of watch, and you're looking uh, to get a, a good price on it, um, well, you, you can't get a you can't get a great one. Maybe you save five hundred bucks or something like that. But you got to be careful because you want to get the the size that's large enough that you want. The, uh, this particular one is forty millimeters. I saw a lot for thirty nine millimeters, thirty eight, I think maybe. And and this is for a guy's size. Is usually that, but some of them, one of them, I think it was twenty millimeters, which is definitely a, more of a a, a, a woman's size. All right, um, so uh, let's talk about the <laughs> what little thing about the the movements in long jeans. Now, like I said, the long jeans are owned lock, stock, and barrel by Swatch, which means it can be used in ETAs. But if you if you look at the they they tell you what the movement is, and they also tell you the price on our website, which is which I like. And uh, this one uses the L888.4. Now, it's based on the ETA A31.L11. Okay. Well, I, boy, I haven't heard of that one before. It's sort of unusual sounding ETA. But then I found out that the ETA A31.L11 is based on the very well-known ETA 2892A2. All right, and so that's the base, and you, you you're gonna find, I think, if all of them, if not most of them, that are automatics, for the uh, COSC, are all on this sort of is considered an upscale um, ETA movement, automatic movement. All right, so uh, so how does it become a COSC? Well, to be COSC, you need a adjustments. 
to meet the COSC standards. And so you can take an ETA, and I think the highest level ETA you can get uh, has gone through the standards requirement in our COSC. And so this is basically what they're doing. And uh, so you end up with a, a chronometer of quality watch. So that's, you know, this is something you like. Uh, uh, this particular one, and there's more than one model, has the, you know, it's simply a time and date. So anyway, uh, if you're interested in a chronometer, depends what you like. Okay, so let's go on. Now, this category of watchmaker and tradition, beside the record, they have the saint Emilier uh, flagship, the 1832, the Master Collection, and the uh, Evidenza. Now, the Evidenza is a tourneau-shaped watch, but it's got a round movement, and uh, all of them do. And again, they're ETA movements. Now, on them, uh, most of them are automatics. Almost all of them are automatics, as a matter of fact. All of these are automatics. And I, boy, they, they do have some hand wound. We'll be taking a look at one in a minute, but not that many are hand round, if I remember correctly. Some of their, some are though. Some really nice ones are are hand wound that they have. All right, um, and again, all of these, those are the prices you can see those, but and they're they're usually pretty good deals. The um, flagship one is is a chronograph. The, the other models have chronographs. So the Evidenza is also chronograph. Now that I think with the chronographs, you're going to get a Valjuice 7750, an ETA Valjuice 7750. Um, again, they, this is reflected in the higher price. Okay. Uh, now the equestrian has got to be one of the strangest <laughs> categories they have. Now here are two watches in in the in the equestrian. One is and they're called equestrian. That's the only category they have. Uh, this one and they tend to be smaller. They tend to be women's watches. Here's one 1495 in quartz. A lot of them have what looks like a stirrup for a um, uh, for the dial and the and the lugs on the dial. <laughs> now now this one is again it's just called the equestrian it's a um pocket watch fifty two thousand dollars and it's got an eta uh sixty four ninety seven i just <laughs> blew me away at first i was thrown when i took a look at that i said wait a minute it's got the small seconds at six o'clock uh isn't that a sixty four um ninety eight the answer is no because the uh, 6497 in a pocket watch with the crown at uh, 12 o'clock that's where the uh, that that is that is exactly where the small seconds belong it it's 18 karat gold but $52,500 man that's a, long, <laughs> a lot uh and notice that it doesn't have um name on it or anything it's just sort of like here's this pocket watch <laughs> All right. Uh, by the way, too, there are a lot of different equestrian models. Uh, this one just—I was so surprised to see that. I thought, "Well, I got to say something." That most of them, small women in quartz. All right. Uh, let's go to let's go on now. The sports models. Uh, again, you you have basically the conquest and the hydro con, uh, conquest. But you really got to look at these things because a lot of the conquests, you look at them and say, oh boy, there's one I like, and you find out it's quartz. Now, if you like quartz, that's fine. Uh, or, but if you're looking for an automatic, you, you got to look. I mean, you, you really have to pay attention to the movements or the type of movements. They, and, and they all give you not only the type, but they give you the reference number. The reference number or the caliber number of the long jeans watches are all ETA based. There may be an exception. I don't know what it is though. Uh, even the ETA quartz are made by ETA. Here's what you have to do. Go to watchbase.com 
and they have the all of the listings of all of the Longines watches and they have the bases and all of the bases you'll find an ETA base in it. Uh, the most common one I think is the 2892 for the automatics. I'm, I'm not sure what it is for the quartz. I didn't really look. Okay, uh, so let's go on. Now the heritage is I, I found some, a, a, a couple of military watches. I found a, a diver, and there's sort of a military theme, but not wholly so, okay? And, <coughs> excuse me, it's, it's sort of an interesting one. Now, as far as military watches are concerned, the COSD is an older one of theirs that I found, and... It's a really neat looking watch, but it was really hard to locate afterwards. I found it on uh, in some reviews, and if you go to the uh, Long Jean site and you do a search on it, it comes up. But uh, I had to use the uh, Hodden Key uh, price on it for for that. It's sort of an interesting looking uh, watch with a NATO strap on it. The newer one is the Longines uh, Military, and that's, I think that's brand new. It uh, just came out. Then the diver is a, uh, you know, with a rubber strap and uh, I think PVC case to it. So that's, that is the, the heritage line, and that's the last line I'm going to talk about. Now, now, one of the things, when I was doing this, I ran across this, um, uh, Patek Philippe as a grand complication was $89,500. Same time, I was, uh, I, and I had just glanced at it. I said, wow, that, that looks a lot like uh, one of the long jeans. So I looked it up, and there's a master collection. And uh, this particular one has a value 7750 in it as a, as a base for it. And I was looking at these watches, and one of the things that came up is that a lot of people say, well, what do you get all saying that, you know, the functionality and so forth isn't the big big thing that, that you make of it. The reason for that is when you see a couple watches like this, and there's an $85,000 difference and the functionality is pretty much the same. You're looking at something other than... $85,000 worth of functionality uh, or complication because here's something from Longines with a um, ETA 7750 base movement to it that does pretty much the same thing. And it even has, it even looks a little similar, not much. I mean, one's got numbers and one doesn't, some of the other details. And I can say, well, there's a huge difference. Uh, first of all, the, you know, the grand complications are rare and yada, yada, yada. So what? Um, if it's rarity that you're talking about, then talk about the rarity. Say, oh, I buy things because <laughs> not, not that many people have them. Mm, that sounds pretty snobby way to go about getting something. Uh, you know, there could be a little piece of junk and not very many of them, but it's still a piece of junk. This is why I keep coming back to the craftsmanship. And to me, that's the most important thing is the craftsmanship. Yes, they should work, uh, keep good time and so forth. But we know you can go out and get a quartz and they're going to keep almost perfect time compared to anything a mechanical watch is doing. They're working on it right now <laughs> to have a better mechanical watch. But then you pull out a smartwatch that does everything in the world. So this, this is why, this is one of the reasons I really don't talk a whole lot about functionality because functionality can be done very inexpensively. Um, the other thing about this watch is one of the things about that Patek Philippe that sort of irked me, it's got a solid case back. And it's hand wound, which I like a lot. And the um, the uh, long jeans is automatic. <coughs> Neither one of them uh, shows much through the back. By the way, too, that's another thing. 
uh, long jeans, if you get a long jean, you're not going to be looking at the back. I I don't think any of them uh, have a, a exhibition uh, window in the back. Uh, the good thing about that, it makes them thinner and perhaps uh, a little less likely to get broken or water damage, something like that to it. Okay, well, uh, I'd really like to hear your opinion. Uh, this is something, like I said, this is very standard horology. And, but, you know, it's also very affordable horology. So, oh, by the way, too, the the price on the on the used market i i didn't really look at too many things on the on the used market the prices are much better on the used market as well as the gray market too on the gray market you can find a lot of new ones that are that are discounted by a big amount this is funny if you take off <clears throat> $500 off the price of a $2,000 watch, you're taking off a lot, all right? On the other hand, you see something with, oh, this thing is discounted, uh, you know, eight or $9,000. Well, it started at twenty-five or $30,000. So a $500 discount on a, uh, on a long jean is not a bad one at all. And this is, we we're talking about uh, in the gray market and the used, um, uh, and the used market. Okay, like I said, like to hear from you, and I'd also, this is an invitation to subscribe if you'd like, and until Sunday, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Science, the art and science of Watts Collection.